Thank you, Mr. Hall. Happy St. Laura Day, everyone. It's a, a really special occasion. I want you to think about perhaps um, a really special day for you as an individual in your life, and, and you know, sometimes birthdays bring to mind. Well, as a college community, this is our very special day um, in, in that sense. And it's a really special day for the Norbertines, of course. So it's very my, um, wonderful privilege to welcome my brother Stephen, brother Kenneth, and brother John with us this morning. Uh, of course, we're celebrating the 900th Jubilee of the Norbertine community. And it's also a welcome to our special guests. We've got parents and friends and members of our advisory board, uh, past staff members of our college, and we also uh, welcome Miss Bowen from St Joseph's next door. Unfortunately, one special guest is not with us this morning, and that's Father Peter. It's just not the same without Father Peter uh, around with us. Um, but I believe that he's watching us and joining with our celebration this morning. Sorry, he's not watching us, he's watching the, the, the liturgy this morning through the, the wonders of modern technology, and so um, we welcome Father Peter as well. As I mentioned, it's a very special year this year for the Norbertines, and as you can see by this beautiful new banner that we have, it's the 900th Jubilee that the Norbertines are celebrating across the globe. And you're going to hear a, or I'll see and hear a short video clip from the Abbot General, Abbot Joss, um, during this liturgy. The first Abbot General of the Norbertines was the Blessed Jewel Foss, of course a very special uh, member of the Primal Trade House, um, but 900 years later now we have Abbot Joss and he visited us in 2019. And in his clip this morning he gives a very special acknowledgement of the commemoration of the 900th Jubilee. He delivered it um, just prior to Christmas Day in 2020 because it was on Christmas Day that Norbert announced the order to the world in 1120. So you'll hear Abbot Josh wish you a uh, Merry Christmas um, and that's where the significance of that was delivered um, late last year. Of course we have two and a half terms to go before Christmas Day. It's quite a deep and theological uh, video clip and presentation by the Abbot General so I want you to listen attentively to that and, and especially listen out for words perhaps that resonate with your experience of our college and our college community. The motto of the 900th Jubilee, as you'll see on the slides in the presentation, is with God among the people. And we also hear in Matthew's Gospel, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there amongst them. So it's also symbolic that our gathering song is our college song, at Omnia Paratus. And the first line of that is, we are gathered as one body in the spirit of the Lord. And that's what we're doing today. And it's through that same spirit that Father Peter joins us as well as we gather to celebrate St Norbert Day. And so much happens on St Norbert Day, and I'll finish with this. We have staff and student sport, we have morning tea, we have activities later on. But as a Christian community, if we are void of the Lord's presence on a special day like today, or we're void of any prayer and true reflection like Mr. Hawke encouraged us to do, then we lose the real meaning of today and the real meaning of what it means to be part of our Christian community of St. Norbert College. So the next 45 minutes should be as special a moment today as anything else that you do. The zoo, warm bowls, whatever other, the other activities that are going on, we need to make sure that the next 45 minutes our liturgical celebration is a very special one. And so I wish you a blessed and enjoyable St Norbert Day. Celebrate this liturgy as Mr Hall challenged us by singing and responding loudly. It's fair to say that on occasion our singing of our national anthem in our college hymn has been ordinary. But today I want you to sing as loud as you possibly can. Wouldn't it be great? If Father Peter not only hears it through the technology, but he can hear it from his room in the Priory, directly from the ORC. So I ask you to do that as a special gift to the Norbertines here with us this morning, and to Father Peter as well. So I ask you now to please join with me and with our community in joining our college song, our gift day, for our liberty this morning. Thank you, Mr. Peter.
in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, through His preaching, His founding of all orders, and His work as Archbishop of Magdeburg, St. Norbert became a man after your own heart. Help us, his followers, to be faithful to the way of life. He taught us, and like him, to preach the good news with enthusiasm to the entire world. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and lives with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Think of God's mercy, my brothers and sisters, and worship him. I beg you, in a way that is worthy of thinking beings, by offering your living bodies as a holy sacrifice, truly pleasing to God. Do not model yourselves on the behaviour of the world around you, but let your behaviours change, modelled by your new mind. This is the only way to discover the will of God and know what is good. What it is that God wants, what is the perfect thing to do. In the light of the grace I have received, I want to urge each one of one among you, not to exaggerate his real importance. Each of you must judge himself soberly by the standard of the faith God has given him. Just as each of our bodies has several parts, and each part has a separate function, so all of us, in union with Christ, form one body. And as parts of it, we belong to each other. Our gifts differ according to the grace given to us. If your gift is prophecy, then use it, your faith suggests. If administration, then use it for administration. If teaching, then use it for teaching. Let the preachers deliver sermons, the alms givers give freely, the officials be diligent, and those who do works of mercy do them cheerfully. Do not let your love be a pretense, but sincerely prefer good to evil. Love each other as much as brothers and sisters should, and have a profound respect for each other. Work for the Lord with untiring effort and with great earnestness of spirit. If you have hope, this will make you cheerful. Do not give up if trials come and keep on praying. If any of the saints are in need, you must share with them and you should make hospitality for special care. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand to God for the gospel. Hallelujah. Alleluia. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him and make our home with him. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a man on his way abroad who summoned his servant and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one each in proportion to his ability then he set up. The man who had received five talents promptly went and traded with them and made five more. The man who had received two made two more in the same way. But the man who had received one went out and dug a hole in the ground and hid his money. Now a long time afterward, the master of those servants came back and went through his account with them. The man who had received five talents came forward bringing five more. Sir, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. Here are five more that I have made. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have shown you can be faithful in small things. I will trust you with greater. Come and join in your master's happiness. Next the man with the two talents came forward. Sir, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. Here are two more that I have made. His master said to him, well done. Good and faithful servant, you have shown you can be faithful in small things. I will trust you with greater. Come and join in your master's happiness.
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. say that today the word was born among us was also the day that our order became an institution. Both Vite of St. Norbert relate that event on Christmas Day, when the first three months repentance made profession on the rule of St. Augustine. St. Norbert choose the rule of St. Augustine because he wanted to remain faithful to his canonical profession. Most of his followers were, according to the Vita, also canons regular. Doing this, St. Norbert makes clear that he did not want to found something entirely new, he wanted to renew an existing way of life, to revitalize an old and venerable tradition. And that is why they choose the rule of St. Augustine. Because St. Norbert himself believed that this rule ordered and renewed the apostolic way of life meaning the life which Christ himself had led with his apostles. A way of life that was continued in the primitive church. Of importance is the concluding sentence. He, Norbert, now hoped to live the apostolic life he had undertaken by his preaching. The choice of St. Norbert and his followers to renew their canonical profession draws from the same inspiration as our motto for this jubilee, with God among the people. I still remember very well the meeting at which we decided upon this motto. The original version, in fact, was in German, meet God by the image. The English model does not render completely the intimacy and the nearness expressed by the German preposition by. It could be tempting to read the motto as referring to the Vita Mixta, where both contemplation and action takes place. This reading would not be entirely wrong either, but it would introduce a dualism or even an opposition between two ways of living. When we are near to the people, we are with God at the same time, since it is His people. We can search, search and find Him anywhere. The full maturity of pastoral activity would be to find God with the people, as 
the God with us, the Emmanuel. And from this intuition, we can give meaning to the fact that the first profession of premonstrual intentions was made on Christmas Day. In the Vitae, Christmas Day appears as the day on which the followers of St. Norbert made profession in a rather laconic sentence. I quote, by the profession of this rule on Christmas Day at Tremontré, one by one his followers voluntarily enrolled themselves into that city of blessed eternity. The celebration of Jesus' birth almost disappears under the story about the discussions about the rule and its interpretation. It is only later on that the special significance of Christmas as the day of the first profession at Premontre is highlighted. In many areas we find paintings featuring the crib with the newborn Jesus in the center. St. Norbert and his companions contemplate the nativity scene. Around the crib are heaped the symbols of their worldly dignity, their crowns, blessings and scepters. A beautiful example of such a painting by Anthony Stevens is reproduced on the invitation to the opening of the Jubilee on November 28 in Straub. The humility of God and his overwhelming love invites us to disarm and to become human like him, poor and simple, in such a way that we too can really be among the people, near the people. This exegesis of our profession is a further development of the primitive devotion of the first Remonstratensians, who considered the life of Jesus with his apostle as the model of their own life. In community, but also beyond as preachers and pastors. They regarded a life of simplicity as a foundation of effective pastoral action. This model of disarming simplicity is shown nowhere more eloquently than in the Nativity scene. The term Jubilee has biblical roots too. In chapter 25 of Leviticus, a Jubilee year is described as a year of reparation and restoration, a period during which God's people remember the graces bestowed upon them. May this celebration help us to discover afresh the roots of our common vocation. Blessed Julie and a Merry Christmas to all of you.
in their daily lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. In the Valley of Purimantrae 900 years ago, St. Norbert gathered his first followers and they spread the message of the apostolic life all over the world. We pray for the Norton communities around the world, and especially our Queen Park, Queen's Park Nortons, that the Lord will bless them in their prayer and work among us. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. The Norbertine Abbey of Tongolo has spread the message of St. Norbert for 900 years. Let us pray that St. Norbert's message of peace and reconciliation may find a home in our world and in our hearts too. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. St. Norbert spent his early life in the city of Zanton, surrounded by his family and friends. We pray that our college community may be one which nourishes and strengthens relationships and makes it easy for each person to achieve their potential. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Our founders left Kilnumbra 62 years ago to share the prison of the Norbertine community with Western Australians. We pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life so that the vision of our founders may be realised. Lord hear. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. <coughs> We pray that as we celebrate St. Norbert's Day, we may be faithful to our past. So let us celebrate our present and look forward to the future with confidence through the intercession of St. Norbert, our patron. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. St. Norbert's remains are now in the Abbey Church of Strahov in Prague, but his spirit is found throughout the world. We pray for those who have died recently and for those whose anniversaries occur at this time especially members of our families, college and parish communities. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of God, send your spirit upon us gathered here to honour the life and ministry of St. Noah. Through his intercession, May we become more devoted to you, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Lord, although we are many, we make up the one body of Christ through the intercession of our Holy Father. No word may we become one in heart and mind. We are this true Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'll take this opportunity on behalf of the Norbertines community of Queen's Park, Father Peter, Father Stephen, Brother Kenneth, and Brother Stephen, we wish you all a very blessed St. Norbert Christ Day. Thank you.
weeks today and happy 900 years to all of you and thank you also for your participation in the liturgy this morning. A celebration of this scope does not happen without careful preparation and organisation, even when we have to make some last minute changes. A special thank you to Mrs Palermo for her swift organisation of the liturgy and to Miss Kidd for the logistics of setting up the O'Reilly Centre with Mr Eddie and also her Year 9 RE class. Thank you also to Brother John, Brother Kenneth and Brother Stephen for your involvement and attendance today. Thank you in particular to our readers, our cantor, um, Sophia Lou, and to the liturgical singing group under the guidance of Mr. Baines and Mrs. Friend. Thank you to the members of our community here today, so the parents, the friends, past staff, um, and the board members. And from the St. Joseph's leadership team, Mrs. Bowen, and I can see that Mr. Rose has also managed to find the time to sneak in um, to join us for part of the liturgy. It is always wonderful to have you all um, share this special day with us. This may be the last opportunity today to acknowledge and thank Mr. Dowling and the St. Norbert Day Committee for the organisation and preparation for today. In particular, for the coordination of the after afternoon activities, morning tea, the staff versus student sport. Thank you also to the many staff who are the conveners of the activities and students, please don't forget to thank them at the end of the day. Perhaps the best way you can show your gratitude is to live out the jubilee motto of having God living among us. Before I dismiss you today, as already mentioned, there is one very special, important person missing from today's celebrations, Father Peter, our prior, who I hope is still watching our proceedings. I'm going to ask you students, could you please stand up? Please stand up. <laughs> Face the back. And on the one, two, three, we're going to yell out, Happy St. Norbert Day, Father Peter, we miss you. One, two, three.
everyone's faces, hands down. Okay, and now the second one, let's put both our hands up in celebration. Yay! 